Anita, I need the clicker. Give me my clicker. <laughs> Perfect. Oh my goodness, this is nerve wracking up here. Hello everyone, how are you? You good? <laughs> I'm only talking a lot because I'm very, very nervous. Um, this is the first for me on stage. Look, look. When I'm usually interviewing people, I'm face to face in like a very cozy situation. Um, but I'm here today because I showed up, because I want to get rid of fear of speaking to lots of people that are in front of me. <coughs> Hi. Um, so equestrian, I'm an equestrian. Um, I've been into horses since I was probably the age of two years old. My first ever thought of a horse was when my mother used to take me out through the, through the desert. I've lived in UAE too long. <laughs> she used to take me out through the countryside on a wicker basket, and this was the most amazing experience for me. Um, the second pony that I had, which you can see here, which was called Ricky. Now, he was one that taught me that the fact that every time that you fall down in life, you get yourself back up. And no matter how many times that happens, you always, always have to strive forward and believe in yourself. But yeah, every single time I rode this pony, you hit the deck. Whether it was a puddle, it was a river, it was a lake, whatever, it was a boof, I was gone. <sighs> I'm still not breathing very well, am I? <laughs> but I will get on to the next thing. So growing up with horses, um, which is something that I actually feel exceptionally passionate about with everybody here in the UAE. I came to the UAE nine years ago now. And it has been something that has been born with me. I've grown up with it. And I really want to pass on the fact of anyone out there that doesn't ride, doesn't have, um, doesn't have the ability to go and ride, their, ride horses, it's something you really need to look at doing. Because for me, any emotion in life, any fear in life, anything that stresses you out in life, you need to go and sit with a horse for maybe half an hour an hour and believe me the peacefulness that they have within them brings you back down to reality and you feel that you're a stronger person inside wow this is really nerve-wracking i'm admitting it guys you know i'm i need to get over this right and you're gonna help me <laughs> I, I, it's a nice horse um so anyway, growing up, again, I went through everything. I then went to college. I did film, media, communications. Um, I worked in the city. Um, and there was never really anything that fulfilled me as much as what horses did. It always came back to that passion and how I wanted to spend time with them, educate people about them. Um, so, when <laughs> oh, this is really bad. I'm so sorry. So as life goes on, you get married, you have your children, and now I've got a white with clicky thing happen. And this is me and my two boys. So my boys, Jake and Archie, back in 2007, we moved to Dubai. And for me, it was, I was expecting to come to this town where there was a lot of sand. And I didn't really know what to expect. But what I found was, cosmopolitan city that was about to open every single door that I wanted as a dream. Every opportunity that I could possibly think of, this country that I'm in now, United Arab Emirates, gave it to me. I started when on the journey of bringing my horse, Etty, into the country, who is, mashallah, he's beautiful, voila. <laughs> He basically took me on this journey. So when I came into the country, I came with uh, a team called Hoofbeats. Now, Hoofbeats were this amazing show with equestrian. Um, they did fire jumping. We competed in events all over Dubai. And I worked with them for about two years. And he gave me so many inspirations in life. He probably gave me the best opportunities I've ever, ever had, which then went on to fulfill more dreams as it came along. This is the book that after I had been involved in 
the Maidan opening in 2011, I actually sat and wrote. He inspired me so much with the experience that I had at the event, the emotions that it gave me, that I started to write. Is it possible? Because it's a lovely video. Oh, it's there. There it is. You just can't hear it. So anyway, this was us entering the arena at the 2011 Maidan um, private party in the desert, which was amazing. It's me and me and Entendido in the front, which was in itself probably another one of the scariest things that I've ever done. And I overcome it. I did that. <laughs> that was good. Um, so anyway, after I'd written my children's books, and we see there's another picture of me and Tendido here. Mashallah. Oh, I don't want that yet. After I, um, after I did the children's book, I was, I'm settling down now. Can you notice I'm kind of like breathing a little bit more? Um, <laughs> after I'd written the children's book, I moved to a stable called Dubai Polo Club in Equestrian. And there, with, from my passions of what I had done, I noticed that there wasn't so many areas for children to compete in the UAE. Not at a national level, not even at an international level, but for kids to come and have fun. So, in 2009, we set up a show jumping league at the Dubai Polo Club. Now, we did this on... Thank you very much. <laughs> we did this on a weekly basis. So every week, we would bring the children in. They would ride school ponies or they would bring their own ponies. We would give them trophies and rosettes and encourage them to be able to come and compete at the show. This then grew. So I, found, I actually found myself one day, which was hilarious, sitting at home with my colouring pencils, drawing out the actual course that they had to jump, so that it encouraged and helped the children to learn something a week before we actually did the event. Now, this moved on, and over time, everyone was starting to say to me, Abby, where are the, uh, where are the competitions? Where are the results? Where are the start lists? Where can I go and ride horses? So with that, I opened up a Facebook group. The Facebook group basically had all the information that they wanted about riding in the UAE. Predominantly at the time, it was in Dubai. Um, it grew quite quickly um, and at one point I was invited to go to an event in Abu Dhabi and the lady that I was speaking to had started saying to me, she said, Abby, you're at all the events, you know what's going on, why do you not start writing? I said, well, for one, I'm dyslexic and that is exceptionally difficult. I have amazing creative mind but I'm not very good at putting it into words. Hence, with the book, I had an editor help me. So I went to the show, and I started to write down just what was going on, really. And then she'd say to me, why don't you go and interview one of the riders? I was like, I can't go and interview one of the riders. I'm nervous. Well, you know that now. So with that, I was like, sat down and thought, I know them, I know them, I know them. I'm going to go and interview them first. So I sat down, I interviewed them. She was like, oh, that sounds really lovely. I was like, yeah, okay, I'll put that in. Then it was, I've got a USB stick. I'm going to give you the whole event's images. I was like, okay, that's fantastic. Can you please go away and do this and this and this for me? And this is all about believing in yourself. The fact that she had motivated me and given me an opportunity and said, you can do this. You are capable of this. You are strong enough to be able to take that away and do it yourself, which... I did. I went away and taught myself with software how to do layout and planning. I found an editor who would edit what I was writing. And everything came into play. The lady was so impressed that she ended up printing 2,500 copies of the 24-page booklet that I put together. That lady who is now probably the one of the most supportive people um, in the United Arab Emirates from Abu Dhabi is Her Highness Sheikha Fatima bin Hazza Al Nayyan, who is one of, she now has the Al Shira, uh, Al Shira show jumping team, and she puts everything back into show jumping. So from this point, I went on. I then started to go to more show jumping events 
interviewing more people, finding out what it was. And then what was really in the passion with, it, with me was the fact of who is telling these people stories? Who is giving them a voice? Who, is, who are you listening to on a global scale about what our riders can do in this country? Because they are amazing, all of them, whether it's dressage, whether it's endurance, whether it's show jumping, whether it's Arabians, all of them have an amazing talent. Now, I have never had much of a belief in myself. It's something I've had from a child. Um, so for me to make me better and to motivate me more, I thought, well, what I can do is put myself into other people. I can make them feel better. I can help give them a bigger scale. And then the Show Hub magazine was born. This now goes out on a monthly basis, and after two years' hard work, we have reached a subscription base of 5,000. <laughs> Thank you. We are moving into various different territories. We want to support our riders here in the country. And what we did find out when you're actually speaking to someone, and I completely forgot the quote, but it's an amazing thing because everyone wonders why that you want to be with your horses. And it was a dear friend of mine who told me as a show jumper, it's not just about getting on the horse. There's an education behind it. So to be an athlete, you have to be an athlete as fitness and stamina is of utmost important in the arena to give you the edge. You need to be a mathematician to calculate the distances and turns in the course. You need to be a nutritionist because you need to know how to look after your horse and what he is eating and what makes him better. You need to have the understanding and you need to be a planner and you need to plan the work schedule that will enhance and that you know what you are doing on a day-to-day -day basis to develop your horse. You also need to be a vet because you need to understand what you are doing at any given time is actually doing with the injury, if there's any injuries or anything else. But every triumph and everything else has to come of all. You have to follow something with passion. So with that, <laughs> I'm trying to see where I am now. But for, for everybody, I just really encourage everyone to go into the sport of equestrianism. And I think it's, it's something for me that has put me on this stage today, even though I didn't do fantastically well, it's fine. I've made another step closer to getting rid of my fear, and next time I will be better. So I thank you so, so much for being exceptionally kind to me and letting me stand in front of you today. Switch and I got a little bit of my story over. Fatima. And now can I run? <laughs> thank you. <laughs>